and at outset thanks to dr deepak agrawal and dattaraj for the invitation to my own place <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i really like to participate in these kind of workshops and it really gives you a first hand information that is what is most important and about endoscopic pituitary surgery uh, first slide uh, so I will not go into the controversies, but what uh, uh, Dr. Narayan has shown you is th the wide exposure to get the pituitary uh, tumors out. And I use this kind of exposure only in giant or very large tumors. But for routine, which are normal uh, macroadenomas, which are not giant, I use uh, simple approaches and uh, I am not that aggressive in exposing or removing the middle terminate and all that lateral exposure because what I feel is that all the advantage of minimally invasive is gone if you remove all these structures from the nose. So now uh, I will just uh, talk about the beginners. Let us, uh, every one of us consider that we are uh, starting a pituitary surgery for the first time and maybe that all those who are already doing will also learn few things from this. So a endoscopic pituitary surgery is endonasal surgery, transesphenoidal using endoscope as a sole visualizing tool in place of microscope. That is not a endoscopic surgery that you do with microscope and then in the end you see and remove the tumor, residual tumor. That is endoscope assisted surgery. Now this endoscopic pituitary surgery has emerged as a better alternative to microscopic transnasal transesthenoidal surgery because the visualization and volume of exposure is superior which permits complete removal of the tumor from the hidden angles and preservation of normal pituitary. It provides a very comfortable post-operative course and complications are also less once you attain the initial learning curve. The patient's position is supine, hips and knee flexed, trunk is elevated to 20 degree which allows